Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. The Simpsons took aim at the American way of tipping and other quirks of our economy in a recent song. Let's watch. <sighs> Here, in Euroland, extra money, not change hand. Eat the lunch from 12 to 3, know how you say gratuity. Waiters, cabbies, escort girls, just cause space rate, what a world. Europe king and here is why, only pay for what you buy. Flat Servers are paid a living wage instead of having to rely on tips, which also reduces income disparity between front and back of house staff. It's mad sexy, equitable. So I've watched this five times now, and Why torture it began yourself like that <laughs> because it, it's so painfully unfunny that it's. I've now watched so many times; it's becoming funny to me how unfunny it is. Um, just like pure, just you know liberal propaganda, to, to use that phrase, without any attempts at like clever humor or anything of that nature. Um, obviously, uh, as I, I know you agree, inaccurate um, descriptions of what life in Europe is like. Put aside the eccentricities of you know, the tipping system. I, I, that's fine to think that's a, a bad system. Okay, whatever. But no, the average um, pay, the average, you know, uh, we're a much wealthier society, uh, the U.S. is than Europe. Our our servers can afford more here, are paid more here, just because we have a more prosperous society. So it's it's based on totally false economic premises that everything's great over there and everyone's everyone's rich. They might be they might be more equal, I guess. There, but they're going more equally equally poor. miserable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you've ever watched House Hunters International, this is such a great insight into the difference between the American real estate economy and the European real estate market, because these Americans go over to places like Belgium or Denmark, or they go to um, to London, and they start looking for flats, as they call it. And they realize very quickly that they're gonna be living in a shoebox. Like the bathroom, you can't even like stick your elbows out. You don't have washer and dryer in unit. You're lucky to have a full stove and a full size refrigerator. I mean, it's truly stunning. They don't have AC over there. You can't can't get ice in your drinks. It's truly crazy. It's very, the it's, Zool, it's very Zoolander. How can we even teach the kids to read if they can't fit inside the building? <laughs> exactly. It needs to be at least ten times bigger <laughs> than this. Um, and then, uh, like on the on the question of the tipping economy, um, I'm sure you've noticed living in D.C. that ever since they raised the wage for servers here, all of the restaurants do now is they of course pass the cost on to consumers. Pretty much every large restaurant you go into nowadays has a 10%, 20% service charge tacked on to the end of your bill. And then you're supposed to continue to add gratuity on top of that. So you're paying significantly more for your meals. And this little thing they showed at the beginning of the clip where Homer's hitting zero, 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 no tip on the little iPad screen, th people always get this conversation wrong because the people who are behind those iPad screens get paid an hourly living wage, as they call it. They actually don't rely on tips. The tips are extra. Like a coffee right. barista makes Fifteen dollars right. an hour. They're not getting paid the five dollars an hour that a server does, right. and so it's like people don't seem to understand that you can hit zero and you're not actually affecting that worker's ability to pay their rent that month. Um, you're you're so correct about the um, the service charges that are being added as a result of DC changing its law around this. The the extra cost to customers for restaurants since DC did this is significant. It's so significant. It has to be changing human behavior. There, there is no way um, that there aren't people who are choosing not to go out because it has gotten dramatically more expensive because of this law. And that is going, I, I've heard, uh, I, I believe incidentally from uh, restaurant owners that it's harder to find um, uh, staff and servers now because of this. Places are gonna have to close. It's totally going to be in, you know, 
easily foreseen but unintended consequences of, uh, of doing it this way. Yeah, and if you talk to servers in this area, they will tell you that they actually make less than they did before because they are not getting as much in tips. So if they were making a lower wage but were getting a significant amount of tips, they would end up earning more than they do under this sort of higher hourly page or salaried system. So they're losing out. And the 20% or 10% from that added service charge is not being split amongst the waiters, it's going to management. Yeah. So it, it, you're paying extra to, you know, to help these servers out with these added cost of them, of the managers and owners paying their wages, and then you realize that they're actually not even seeing really the direct benefit of that. So the entire system is like totally screwed up now. Um, don't go out to eat in DC, come to Virginia, it's way better. <laughs> and on the clip, I am perfectly capable of laughing at things that I have an ideological bent or a policy prescription that I don't agree with if they are actually funny, which this just, oh my God, it was not. They're not even trying. Well, they could have easily made it funny by just slipping in a few lines with a counter narrative, like yeah. the other perspective, like, you know, singing about free healthcare. Throw in a guy like waiting in a long line with like a broken leg. I don't know. I mean, you, there's like little things you can yeah. do to make it a little bit more balanced, yeah. and then you can generate laughs from both sides because it's not an obvious propaganda yeah. piece. Or I didn't see them. You know, pra they're always praising Europe selectively. I wasn't seeing Europe praised for um, for having um, the schools remain uh, open, having a more dedicated effort to keep schools open during COVID, having actually more relaxed masking and vaccine policies than we did in the U.S. It's it's. Like, sometimes I'm like, I long for the freedoms that they have in Europe here in the U.S. Yeah, especially in Sweden yeah. uh, with COVID. Yeah. Um, we really blew it. Yes, indeed. More free media right after this.